graphic crime scene photos of Riva Stienkamp's murder can now be shown at Oscar Pistorius' sentencing. Protests over power cuts turn violent in Johannesburg. Hello and welcome to it. You're watching E! News Direct. I'm Duduzi Leranela. And I'm Sandy Lagangose. Good evening. To comment on any of our stories, you can find us on Twitter and Facebook. That's at E! News Direct. And tonight our hashtags are Oscar Pistorius and Youth Day. Graphic crime scene photos of Riva Stienkamp's murder can be shown. Judge Tokozile Masipa made the ruling after her family agreed to have them released. The state wants Oscar Pistorius to get the minimum 15-year sentence for Stienkamp's murder. But Pistorius' legal team insists he should be given correctional supervision. Pistorius will find out on Friday if he's going to prison and for how long. Oscar Pistorius and his legal team are going to extraordinary lengths to argue that the 29-year-old should not be viewed as the athletic superstar he once was, but as a disabled and anxious man who killed out of fear. This is the person. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. It's dark. He's on his stumps. That's all common cause. Not on his legs. He's not running around the track. He suffers from an anxiety disorder. <coughs> we know that the uncontested evidence was that when he was on his stumps, his balance was seriously compromised. And without anything, he would not be able to defend himself. He was anxious. He was frightened. That frightened finding is not gone. And he was suffering from an anxiety disorder. That's not gone. This must all be seen in the context of his disability and the pervasive effect of the disability. Rue says Pistorius is still being wrongly portrayed as having deliberately murdered Riva Steenkamp, despite the High and Appeal Court's finding that he did not have direct intent to kill her. But it's apparent that Steenkamp's family is still not convinced by Pistorius' account of the shooting. Oscar's version changed so many times. And I never ever heard him saying that I apologize for shooting and murdering Reva behind that door. Um, I don't feel there was an apology from him. I don't feel the true version came out. We just wanted the truth. That's what we wanted. Accepting a court's findings, I have Prosecutor Kerry Nell echoed this sentiment as he argued Pistorius should get the minimum 15-year sentence. He failed to provide any acceptable version for his conduct. At paragraph 17, the SCA remarked, with ample justification, the court found the accused to have been a very poor witness. His version varied substantially. In the light of these contradictions, one really does not know what his explanation is for having fired the fatal shots. Judge Tokazila Masipa has ruled that photographs of Steenkamp's body may be made public. These photographs happen to be part of the evidence, which is a public record. Initially, not to make the photographs public, was to protect the integrity of the family of the deceased. If the family of the deceased now feel that protection is no longer necessary, it is not for me to interfere with that decision. For that reason, I shall grant the request. The state has rubbished reports that it will appeal anything less than an eight-year sentence for Pistorius, saying that it can only make such a decision after sentencing is passed. Karen Morn, Pretoria. With Johannesburg experiencing some extremely low winter temperatures, many have been left without any electricity. Some residents in Klipsbreit and Soweto have been without power for days now, and it's led to angry protests. A protest over a prolonged power outage on a winter's day. Residents here have been without electricity since Monday. 
a few meters away, distraught relatives just lost a loved one. Although unconfirmed, community members claim the lack of electricity led to the death of Daniel Hawk. An adult man that passed away due to the fact that his respironical machine, oxygen machine, couldn't give him the oxygen to his body's requirements due to the lack of electricity. City Power says the problem in clip rate is due to a cable fault in a waterlogged area, something they are trying to address. Soweto also saw similar protests. This resident says her family has been without electricity for four days. Oh, and a chakoli atura pap, 40 rand. Yeah, he spent that two days. Conditions have become unhygienic. No ba ufasi nu tata manza banda utu sulu uzo. Kafa ni kwapa di ti vup di ko. Di ti di ko. Nanga pa di ko. Eh? Sien zenton. ESCOM says the outage is due to a system overload that damaged its mini substation. It says it's in a process of replacing it. Malunge Lopui, Soweto. Angry members of the ANC Nelson Mandela Bay branch have been refused entry to the provincial head office in King Williamstown despite having arranged a meeting. They claim the candidate's list for the upcoming election has been tampered with. Members travelled 250 kilometres from Port Elizabeth to King Williamstown to relay their grievances to party leaders. They believe that many officials who had won enough votes to appear on the list had been removed. But when they arrived at the party's provincial head office, they were prevented from entering the premises. A provincial executive council member eventually arrived to address them. Members say they want the matter to be sorted out speedily. Wasting water could soon become a criminal offence. The Department of Water and Sanitation wants municipalities to face hefty fines for failing to conserve water. The, the Western Cape, rather, has become the latest province to face water restrictions. Save water or else. A warning from the Department of Water and Sanitation. It says new legislation will soon be gazetted where provinces will be forced to find their municipalities found guilty of wasting water. This could in turn be passed on to ratepayers who will also face penalties. Regular assessments by the department show that water levels in dams around the country continue to decline weekly. Now a water restriction has been put in place for the Western Cape. 20% restriction is going to be applied so that we enhance the, uh, uh, the probability of our dam levels rising. So we want our dam levels to rise. At the moment, if I read this now, that the lower no than normal rainfall caused by El Nino since last year. While the Western Cape has been less affected by the current drought, government says the province still needs to save water. Okay, thank you. As the country commemorates Youth Day on June 16, two women have shared memories of their imprisonment for participating in the 1976 student uprisings. They say it was a painful period that forever changed their lives. Pale Samusa was just 12 years old when she was arrested by the apartheid police for participating in the 1976 student uprising. Forty years later, the memory of her incarceration is still fresh. Her parents had no idea where she was. They checked the mosques, they checked the shops which they bent. They thought maybe I went inside to loot something. They come and search here. Uh, even in the mosque, they went to mosque to look for me. They didn't find me. Then the last hope was here. They found me here. Fellow prisoner Joyce Dipale had a stroke while in exile in Canada and now has a language impairment. 
She's brought this book along to show how police subjected her to electric shock by attaching wires to her breasts. But history, history, you understand. The women say they were treated like animals. They, uh, they don't hand it nicely like a human being. They just make it like this. That's your boss. You cannot forget. It's, it's to forgive, but you cannot forget. Exactly. exactly. It's hard to forget. Having heard the stories of torture in Georgia, it's no surprise that to this day, this place still brings tears to the woman's eyes. Zikona Chona, Constitutional Hill. World News Now and police in the United States are searching for a two-year-old boy who has been snatched by an alligator at a Disney resort. The boy was paddling in a shallow water in shallow water rather in a man-made lagoon when he was taken. His parents tried unsuccessfully to save him. Russian and English soccer fans have scuffled in the French city of Lille, despite warnings that their teams will be expelled from Euro 2016 if there's more soccer violence. Police moved in quickly and two Russians were arrested. Overnight, alcohol bans are being enforced in the city for the week. Checking with the New Zealand has all of his social media. Indeed I do. Thank you so much, Sandile. The ANC Youth League says its former leader, Julius Malema, won't be celebrated because he betrayed the movement. As part of the 40th anniversary of the 1976 students uprising, the league says it will be honoring its past leaders. Malema, who led the league between 2008 and 2012, was expelled for bringing the ANC into disrepute. And the equivalent of more than 40 25 million rand has been raised for the families of those killed at a gay nightclub in Orlando, Florida in the U.S. The money collected by members of the LGBTI community will also be used to set up a help center. Omar Martino opened fire in the nightclub in the early hours of Sunday morning, killing 49 people and wounding dozens before being shot dead by police. Do remember, we love to hear from you. You can check us out on Twitter and Facebook. That's at E! News Direct, or you can head on over to our website that's enca.com forward slash direct of course your business news after the break as well as your weather Money matters now and Gupta-owned company Oak Bay is having a rough day. The company is dealing with a security breach and a plunge in the value of its stock. Oak Bay Resources and Energy's share price collapsed by over 90% on the JSE today. Earlier hackers attacked the company's websites and shut them down. Now the JSE freezes any listed company whose share price dives by over 30% in a single session. Oak Bay is listed in a segment of the market that does not have circuit breaker alerts. And with that, let's see how the markets perform today. Check in with the Weather Center now. Here's Candace. Another cold front kept temperatures cold and brought in much needed rainfall on Wednesday. We're still forecasting some morning rainfall over the southwestern parts on Thursday. With cloudy weather and rainfall pushing in along the east coast resulting in a cooler day. And cold air also extends through to the central interior. Fine and mild to warm in the northeast with partly cloudy and cold conditions expected in the west. The cool air finally reaches KwaZulu-Natal on Thursday with highs in the upper teens and low 20s. Overcast with rainfall for Durban and Peter in Wrightsburg, with rain reaching Richards Bay on Thursday evening. We're expecting cooler weather for the Eastern Cape, with some drizzle for Bishroom, Tata and East London. Morning light rainfall starts off the day over the southwestern part of the Western Cape, with another cold day in store. You'll see highs in the middle and upper teens. 
Cold air extends through to the northern Cape with highs in the mid-teens over the northern and eastern parts. Bitterly cold for southern with a high of only 8 degrees and a minimum of minus 1. Cold air pushes through to the free state with maximum temperatures mainly in the mid-teens, 19 degrees and sunny as we head towards Harry Smith. A few degrees cooler but sunny for the northwest, warm for Rustenburg at 25, fine and warm as we head towards Limpopo with highs in the middle and upper 20s, 32 degrees for Palaboa and Messina and we're also expecting a sunny and hot day for the Mpumalanga low felt with a high of around 20 as we head towards the high felt with a sunny forecast. Fine and dry for Gauteng on Thursday, 21 degrees for Vereniging and Johannesburg and Pretoria at 23 degrees. On Friday, we're expecting cooler weather and rainfall to push in through to the low felt with some light rain still along the east coast. Fine and mild weather continues over the central and northeastern parts all the way through to Saturday and we're expecting another cold front to bring in cloudy, wet and cold weather for Cape Town on Saturday. It's 16 degrees, but of the warm forecast along the Eastern Cape and KZN coast. That's all from the Weather Centre for now. Have a great night. Thank you, Candace. After the break, school children are ready to make a strong statement when they anchor our news broadcasts on Youth Day. Welcome back. High school pupils from around the country are getting a chance to become news anchors. Interesting. They'll be on air at our studios tomorrow on Youth Day and they already have strong opinions on the issues that they want to tackle. I'm a news anchor on ENCA. I am a news anchor on ENCA. Having pupils bring the news to South Africa was suggested last year by a 17-year-old schoolboy. He saw it as a way for the media to reach out to young viewers. I believe uh, they not actually engaged in the current affairs and whatsoever. They actually believe uh, in sharing selfies and whatsoever on social media. This year's young anchors aren't interested in only reading the news. They have their own opinions on how they would do things if they were leaders. If you were mayor of a city or town, what would you do? Firstly, I think I would encourage people of my city to become entrepreneurs and dependent because I've realized that and not rely on grant money because I've realized that many people on um, grant money is um, it's, it's contributing to the population increase because many people rely to it as a source of income. But these teens haven't forgotten the sacrifices that were made on the 16th of June 1976. They've created a, a bright future for us, and I think uh, we are very privileged to, you know, to go to schools today without paying any amount. Um, we have a privilege to go to universities without paying. Barbers, they offer us. I mean, like June 16th is a day to celebrate. I mean, to me, it means a lot. I need to respect that day. The pupils hope they'll do justice to the stories they tell when they take to the air on Thursday. Teresa Taylor. Johannesburg. Here's a reminder of the day's top stories before we say goodbye. Graphic crime scene photos of Riva Stienkamp's murder can now be shown at Oscar Pistorius' sentencing. <laughs> Protests over power cuts that turn violent in Johannesburg. And that's a wrap from the E News Direct team. It is indeed. Until next time, good night.